Hello, welcome to my kitchen once again. So here we are for another live recipe on our Facebook page. I am Chef Day, I am founder of The Vegan Chef School and we are here every day at midday on Facebook showing you guys some of our favorite recipes. Really simple but effective recipes. That's what we're going for with you so that we can show you how easy and simple it is to create great vegan food at home. So I'm just going to make sure that I can see our live on my computer here so that I can see all of your comments. So please do say hello, let us know where you're from. You know, that's always like a really, really lovely thing to do. And also just so we can get to know you guys a bit more uh, because that's always a great thing in the fact that we're building this community of really, really lovely people. So let me just make sure that I can see myself and your comments. Make sure that we're not sideways, which does sometimes happen. And you guys will have to tell me today how the sound is because we've got this little thing here in order to try to make the sound a little bit better and a little bit easier for everyone to hear because you know it's really frustrating when you can't properly hear stuff um so in just a word oh there i am there i am okay great so we've already got a few people in with us today let me see who is here and it's 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 coming, it's coming. It's just been really, really slow today. Here we go. We've got lots of lovely regulars. Good, 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 good. So Sarah, Colleen, Katie is here today as our admin. So Katie, belated happy birthday to you. Sarah, uh, it says, hummus, love it. Just need a nicer recipe than the ones I've tried. Still haven't found the perfect one. So hopefully my one will suit you. Uh, Maria, hello. Amandine, lovely to have you back. Liz, morning from Canterbury. Lovely, beautiful Canterbury. Sarah says, is it a painting at the end of the rainbow? We will get onto that in a second. Denise, greetings and good morning from Savannah. George, I, know, I think that you've been on before because when you say the word Savannah, it just, it sounds absolutely divine to me. I have no idea whether it is. <laughs> it sounds glorious. Anne and Justine, thank you for joining us again. Um, okay, so, where were we? Uh, Colleen said I had to look up Ducker. I had never heard of it before. Well, I will describe to you guys what it is and how lovely it is. Justine said, hey, and you read my mind. I was thinking it would be cool to do homemade hummus. Good, good, good. Uh, we've got Trisha from Liverpool. Thank you for coming back to us. Karen, lovely to have you here. Uh, Jenny said, hi, love hummus. Don't know what duck it is though. Okay, I will get onto that in a second. Oh, Denise said, we're south of Charleston, South Carolina. See, Charleston is also one of those places where the sound of it just sounds like divine, absolutely divine. No idea. Maybe one day I'll get there. Maybe one day I'll get there. That would be nice. Jim, thank you for joining us again. So today, oh sorry, before we get into the recipe, yes there is a rainbow in my kitchen, yes it's really obvious, and yes you have to guess what is at the end of our rainbow today. And I think it was Sarah, was it Sarah? That already guessed, quick off the mark. You have to like, wake up early to get on with everyone on this show who are expert rainbow spotters. Um, yes, you were right, it is a painting at the end of a rainbow. So this is a painting that I received this morning from my niece, Amy, and she is 15. Um, incredibly talented at pretty much everything. <laughs> um, and I sent her some really lovely paints, and these are paints where you can create these kind of like, um, like different textures. So I sent her those because, you know, she's like, speeding through all of her homework and really needs like you know she's got an active mind so i sent her these lovely paints and she sent me this this morning so it was really really lovely to receive that in the post um i think sending things to people by post is an especially especially lovely thing to do recently i sent a friend no actually sorry it's my sister who is of course my friend but um uh yeah i sent her some raw halo chocolates so you can buy raw halo chocolate from their website so that's raw r-a-w h-a-l-o raw halo and the uh the postage and packing is free so i just sent her like a few bars of or a couple of bars of chocolate like that which are divine absolutely divine and it was just a really nice thing to you know to get that delivered to you three you know and, and as we're not able to see each other not able to give each other a hug chocolate in replace of a hug 
in my mind, they're kind of like equal. <laughs> So I couldn't hug my sister, so she got some chocolate instead. Um, okay, so Jenny said, every day is a school day. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Jenny said, she's learning loads. Good, good, good. Lara, thank you for joining us. And also, thank you for doing a shout out on the Jewish Vegetarian Society. That was absolutely fantastic of you. Thank you. Um, Justine said, and the posters are amazing. Yes, absolutely. To keep on doing this so that we can keep sending each other things like this is really, really lovely. Um, and, ah, oh, uh, Anthony, lovely to have you here again. And Mariam, lovely to have you here too. I'm sorry, we've already guessed what's at the end of the rainbow. It's a lovely painting that I got um, uh, delivered to me this morning. Okay, so on to today's recipe. The reason why we are sharing so many hummus-based recipes with you uh, this week, so from today through to Sunday, is because tomorrow it is International Hummus Day. And of course, hummus is quite a big thing for vegans. And, you know, we wanted to make sure that we didn't just celebrate it on one day, we celebrated it on six days. So you will see a lot of hummus-based recipes from us this week. But it isn't just gonna be your bog standard hummus. No, 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 no. We're gonna really push the boundaries when it comes to hummus. So, you know, check in with us. You won't get bored, I absolutely promise. It won't just be us making like a hummus, a bog standard hummus every day, no. Not, no, 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 not on my watch. Um, Doug, thank you for joining us again. And Gloria, Gloria, lovely to have you along for the show. Okay, so. My idea for the show today was that I always wanted to make the perfect hummus. So when I, I worked for a Middle Eastern family for quite a while, and of course hummus was in quite a lot of um, dinners that they had, lunches that they had, so I really got to know what made a perfect hummus. But of course hummus is one of those dishes that you can really tailor to your own tastes. But the one thing that I thought a perfect hummus had was a lightness to it. So this is store-bought hummus and it has this lightness to it that I was never able to recreate when I made hummus at home. So I have tried to make it as light as this. Um, and when I worked for the Middle Eastern family that I mentioned, I would use uh, jars of chickpeas and jars of chickpeas are great really, you know, they are so fluffy and so light that it makes a really, really lovely hummus. Um, same with um, butter beans as well. Jars of butter beans will create a really, really light and fluffy butter bean mash. The only problem now is that the only place that I can get the jars from is Ocado and they cost about four pounds a jar. Now they are a, quite a tall jar. In fact, I'll get one out for you. Here we go. So this is the jar. Um, and, but of course, you know, it is really, really expensive. So, you know, four pounds versus, and these are organic as well. I think these are about 85p for this. Whereas, you know, this was four pounds. So it, it doesn't make sense to always buy this to make hummus with, you know, we need it to be a bit more economical than that. Okay, so I've experimented with a few things, and if you find that your chickpeas aren't that big, you know, some of them can be really, really tiny, like bullets, then you can boil them. So you can boil them in the water that they come in, the aquafaba that they come in, um, and just bring them to a boil and then reduce them to a simmer, and just simmer them until the aquafaba is gone. You can do it that way, and that may make your chickpeas bigger, because before they were actually canned, they might not have been cooked enough. But these ones, I tried, I tried cooking them and they don't get any bigger than this. So there's no point in doing it. And also, of course, you're wasting all of that lovely aquafaba, which we want to use for mayonnaise and meringues and cakes and blah, blah, blah. You know, all of that sort of stuff. So we want the aquafaba. Okay, so um, that is one technique that you can use. But with these ones, we don't have to. But there is an extra step that I will be using later, which will create a better, lighter 
hummus. But you guys might be like, yeah, that's a step too far. So, you know, you can make the choice as to whether to include that step or not. Okay, so with our recipe, um, we've got our ingredients here at the top. This is just for the hummus. Now, this is a really good kind of like base recipe. So you can go with this and then you can mix it up a bit. So you can add more olive oil, but just beware that if you add more olive oil, then it does make it heavier because olive oil is heavy, basically. So, you know, you might not be able to get that lightness if it's something that you want. It's definitely something that I want, but for other people, they might not mind it. Just, I always found that when I just made bog standard, like hummus, that it was kind of pasty. Um, it was more like a pate. And I wanted this airy kind of whipped type of thing. So, um, so yeah, so we have our olive oil there, but I'm only gonna put one tablespoon of olive oil in, and then we have our lemon juice, tahini, cumin, salt, and garlic. So they're the basic ingredients for hummus, and you can really, really play around with those and get it a bit tartar if you want it to be a bit tartar. You know, if you like tahini, put more tahini in. That can be a bit of a polarizing flavor. So, you know, but you can definitely play around with that. But what I'm going to do is, you know, really go all out with this recipe and, you know, put quite a lot of work into it to try to make the perfect hummus. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to toast these cumin seeds that are going to go in there. Now, of course, in this recipe, you know, we've got cumin here. You can put ground cumin in if you want to, but do try to make sure that it is, it doesn't smell stale because quite often we can have spices in our cupboards for a very, very long time. You know, they're at the back of the cupboard, hardly ever used, and they might be like, yeah, two years old, and just the flavor doesn't come through. And that's the thing, you know, you, you guys might be trying out recipes at home where it says one teaspoon of cumin powder, and you put it in, and just the flavor really isn't coming through. And it might be because your spice is a bit old. So when I went to Morocco, I, um, I brought back a load of spices with me, Good job that my bag wasn't searched. Um, so, look, and you can just go to stores there and buy like all of these, all of these spices. And the smell and taste of them was beyond anything I had ever bought in this country. Really, 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 really strong. I would say the closest thing to it has been this East End brand, which is also very economical, very, very cheap. Um, the only thing is, is that it's not organic. So once these guys start doing organic, then I'm there. I'm definitely there. So I said, can I omit the oil completely? And what's EVOO? Okay, so I put my shortened version on there. Um, EVOO is extra virgin olive oil. So that's my, um, the way, yes, exactly, Avantine. <laughs> thank you, thank you. But it's just like to make space on there because sometimes like cramming all those words on there can be a bit difficult. And Sarah said, can I omit the oil completely? Yes, absolutely, you can. So when I use olive oil for this, I do try to use quite a flavoursome olive oil because I want to taste the olive oil in it. Um, you know, it, it, I don't want to use a light olive oil. I want to use more kind of like a fruity olive oil to really, really get that flavour coming through. But yes, you can omit it if you want to. Okay, so I'll just add one teaspoon of cumin seeds to my pan and we're going to toast and grind them. So this is going to give you a much stronger cumin flavor basically and that's what we want i want these these really strong flavors to come through i don't want it to be a mild hummus at all i really want it to be very very flavorsome because that's the way that i like it okay and while while this is toasting we can mix the other um, ingredients we can blend the other ingredients so when we toast seeds we just want to toast them until we can start smelling them I've got my little pestle and mortar here very dinky um, and so we'll put it into there afterwards let it cool down for a few seconds and then I'll grind it and we will have to give it a really 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 good grind because I don't want any bits in it um, I want it to be as smooth as possible okay so here just move these over here I have, this is a, just a bit of Tupperware that I use, which is perfect to use with my hand blender. So when I got these hand blenders, the jugs, the jugs that came with it were much, much thinner. Uh, and if you use a jug that is quite slim, then there just won't be much room, much room for the mixture to move around, for the blender to move around. So I use these instead. These are 
Who are they made by? Systema. Systema. I don't know if you guys know know that brand, um, but they have these great like clicking um, lids on it. So this also has a lid to it too. So it's a great kind of like double purpose, dual purpose type thing, which I love for. Um, I love for my kitchen because it means that you can have more useful things in your kitchen without it feeling really crowded. Okay, so I'm already starting to smell those. I'm going to keep an eye on them so they don't burn. Pop our chickpeas in here and I have washed and drained these completely. I've got the aquafaba to one side so that I can make something with that later. So our chickpeas in here and this is just one can of chickpeas. There we go. And then we have our extra virgin olive oil. And this doesn't say olive extra virgin olive oil on the side, but that's because I use like really big vats of extra virgin olive oil and then I pour it into this to use it. And I really like this bottle because it's got a good spout on it. It's not too wide. I find if the spout is too wide, then I try to put just a drizzle in and you end up with a glug. And I don't want that. So so I'm keeping hold of this of this lovely bottle because it's really, really, really useful for when you just want to add a touch of oil. Uh, Nuala, thank you for joining us. And James, James, what a lovely name. And Nora, thank you for joining us. Okay, so we've got one tablespoon. And you can put more in if you want to, but just remember it will make it more heavy. And I'm really trying to keep it light with, my, um, with the texture of my hummus. Okay, so this is about done. So I'll just pop the cumin seeds into here and then I'll pop those to one side we will toast those but not just yet and we will need this for the ducker um, okay so onto this so now we have the lemon juice so two tablespoons of lemon juice Erin hello and Nuala hello um, so two tablespoons of whoop of uh, lemon juice. Um, I really, really like tart, sour things, so I put quite a lot of lemon juice into my hummus. There we go. I'll just take that seed out. And another one. And these are massive lemons that we're getting now. That's the beauty of organic fruit and veg, is that you just never know what size you're gonna get. <laughs> But these lemons will have four, maybe five tablespoons of lemon juice in them. So, you know, really that's quite a bargain. There we go, two tablespoons of lemon juice in there. Um, and onto the next ingredient, which is actually going to be the tahini. So as Nikki mentioned in her recipe, tahini, um, there, there are different brands that she likes. So you might find a brand that you prefer. Um, and also, you know, as I said before, it is a bit of a polarizing flavor. So some people like it to be a real background flavor. Some people like it to be a much more dominant flavor. And depending on where you're having hummus around the world, it will be more tahini. Tahini, um, or less tahinery. You know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> it will taste more or less of tahini. <clears throat> there we go. There we go. So I've got one oh. teaspoon in there. And whenever I am dipping into something like this, um, I always have a tiny spoon just to scoop it out. Otherwise, you're going like that for ages and nothing's coming out. And another word to you guys about you know, making up either our recipes or anybody's recipes. If you, if it says teaspoon or tablespoon, please use a measuring teaspoon and a measuring tablespoon. Don't just use any old teaspoon because see, this is a baby teaspoon and this is a regular teaspoon. So they're different sizes. So with any recipe, please use a measuring teaspoon or a tablespoon. You may have seen in Danielle's show, she doesn't, but she can do a lot of things by sight because she's been making these recipes for a really long time and you know, that type of thing. So, and they're her recipes. So it's really easy to make your own recipe. Oh, we've got someone from Guam. 
I think you might be our first person from Guam. And you're called Luna. <laughs> awesome name. Awesome name. Love, love, love interesting names on the show. Sarah, I've tried recipes that use veggie broth or aquafaba instead of milk or water. What's been your experience with that? Um, well, I would that you use veggie broth or aquafaba instead of but it depends which recipes i don't know which recipes uh you're talking about so i've used aquafaba in um gluten usually as a replacement for egg actually so gluten-free pasta bread um of course things like meringues and mayonnaise that type of thing but which uh it depends which which recipes um you're making erin so that she lost my accent thank you uh sarah said is that whole or light hummus um and erin tahini <laughs> marie said it is toasted tahini yes i think i think it is this one's palm oil free as well so yes i think it is toasted uh i meant the hummus instead of the milk or the water okay so the oh ah right okay so sarah is suggesting you know what happens if you use the aquafaba in the hummus rather than putting milk or water in it it is a good idea but you need to taste the aquafaba to see how salty it is and to see if it has you know a bit of a flavor on it so and you know the reason why i didn't want to use it in this recipe is because i'm going for light and airy and you know a lighter type of hummus and i think the aquafaba you know the aquafaba is a bit um how can i say it almost slimy <laughs> i know it's not very nice to say that about food but you know it's still like a bit heavy and i want to inject lightness into this dish so ah oh, sorry i said my cat was called luna love the name it is a lovely name kieran thank you for joining us thank you for joining us and kieran uh so so kieran is my sister's boyfriend and uh so he lives with with my niece as well so you'll have to tell her kieran that her painting is down here. I just received it this morning. Um, okay, sorry, back to... <laughs> uh, Sarah said, I've done it so many ways and using all different things, but again, still haven't found the perfect one. So hopefully this will be the one. What I would say is for me, this is the perfect one. But for you, you might want it a bit different. I want it to be quite tart and I also want it to be quite airy and I also want it to be really 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 flavoursome so that's my thing but with hummus you know you can make it your own basically but this is my perfect hummus okay so uh, now we've got the tahini in there and we will grind this these cumin seeds and I'm gonna really go for it with this and try and get it into a powder as much as I can because I don't want it to be gritty at all. And if you don't grind this enough, then your hummus will be gritty. And I don't want to go to all of that effort to make this hummus lighter. And then, you know, it's a bit gritty. I don't think that would be pleasant. Okay, so I've got that ground into quite a fine powder there and I'll pop that in. So this is quite a lot of cumin to put into it because you know the taste of the cumin will be quite strong because i've toasted it but i want it to be like that so you guys have to make up your own mind and decide whether you don't want it to be so cum cuminy <laughs> and then we've got our salt so a half to one teaspoon of salt there we go so again that's something that is up to you but it does need quite a whack of salt in this and then we've got our garlic so as some of you guys might know I don't like raw garlic because I'm tasting it for like weeks afterwards so <laughs> I use garlic powder if I'm not going to cook it out so we've got one teaspoon of garlic powder it is a lot it is a lot because as I said, I want a hummus that is really, really flavoursome. I don't want it to be bland at all. Okay, so these are our ingredients. Now, this is the one that is going to make it lighter. Um, well, it's going to be one of the ways that we're going to make it lighter. We've got 100 ml of soya milk here. Oh, Erin said that she loves cumin. Good, good, good. Um, so we'll just pop this in. I'll just put half of it in for now. And then we'll give it a good blend. <laughs> Mm. 
So we do want it to be as smooth as possible, so I'm really gonna give it a very good blend. <laughs> see that because I'm using this type of container, this shape, versus a bowl, you know, a bigger bowl, I'm not having to chase it all around the bowl. It really contains it in this place, which means that it's just really a lot easier for me to blend. add the rest of this milk. Uh, Liz said if you use fresh garlic how many cloves? It, that's a real like subjective thing. Um, the Middle Eastern family who are also like half Italian, <laughs> they loved loads of garlic in their hummus, absolutely loads of garlic. In fact it was far too garlicky for me so it's a real subjective thing but I would say start with a half. Just start with a half and then taste it and then add to it because, you know, you can add more, but you can't take it away. viewing but you know we have to get it right we have to get it right if you guys have something like a Nutribullet it would make a really 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 lovely hummus you know things like a Nutribullet Nutri Ninja don't just need to be used for um, you know smoothies you know, and that type of thing they can work really really well with this and because we've added that milk because there's a bit more liquid in it it's going to work really really well in a Nutribullet or a Nutri Ninja because it's got enough liquid to um to move around if it was thicker um you know if it was that very kind of like thick uh hummus without the milk essentially then it wouldn't go round it would really really struggle with that but because we've got that liquid it would be fine in a Nutri Ninja okay and now um oh sorry a few questions here um oh Sarah said will garlic powder work instead of granules yes absolutely it's, it's the same thing actually it's the same thing uh you, the only one you've got to watch out for is garlic salt because obviously that's got salt in it as well so you might not need so much salt Denise says, I use roasted garlic as caramelized. <gasps> that sounds lovely. I really, really like that idea. Thank you for that. Uh, Doug said, I need those types of containers in a bowl. I end up wearing whatever I'm blending. Yes, exactly, exactly. Uh, Sarah said, I always make it in the Ninja and it gets super smooth. It really, really does, really does. And now we're going to do another little number on it to make it lighter. So this is a way to make it lighter. I know that not all of you are gonna to wanna to do this, but I set myself the task of making the perfect hummus. So here we go. That isn't on. Why isn't that working? <laughs> oh. No. Okay, so it's just decided to not work this time. What's going on? Sorry guys. Oh! <laughs> so was that what you mean, Doug, when you said it went everywhere? Yes, sometimes happens in my kitchen as well. Ah, Jeff, thanks for joining us. Good timing, good timing. Okay. <laughs> Okay, 
Okay, now we're going to go up a notch. Right, and there we go. So yeah, I've whipped it, I've whipped it. Um, and it does make it a bit lighter. Um, it is, <laughs> we've got a few, a few laughs in there. Um, oh, Aruj said, if you don't have tahini, what can we use? Okay, so it would be absolutely fine without it, absolutely fine without it. But you might, you know, if you've got something like sesame seeds already, you know, if you've got those in the cupboard, then you could, toast them and grind them um, when you do the cumin and put that in. That would be really, really lovely. Okay, let's wipe down here a bit. <laughs> here we go. Right, okay, so we've got our hummus is ready now and we'll get on to the ducker. Now we have our lovely little pot here. So this is an olive, olive wood pot it's really really nice and I can feel it's really really light and that was what I was looking for I want it to be light I don't want it to be heavy and pasty at all and guys when you're making it now is the time to taste it and do any adjustments so you know if you want to add more salt now is the time if you want to add um, more lemon juice or you know anything like that then then now is the time okay so that is our hummus there and now let's get on to the ducker George said what brand and model of immersion stick blender do you use so much conflicting advice over hard hard to find 500 watt blenders here in Canada really that really surprises me um, so yeah I mean I always say over 500 watt because otherwise when we're doing things like in this recipe you know we're going to be uh, grinding some nuts here and under 500 watt may find it quite difficult and you may end up burning out the motor which of course like we don't we really really don't want to do um so the blender that i've got it's a breville um and it was very very cheap it cost 24 quid from argos and they've been i mean i've had these for five years or so something like that and they've had a lot of use a lot of use because i've taught lessons with them so um that's this is the one that i suggest it's breville breville um just made your banana bacon recipe sarah says and the sauerkraut last night and we'll make the hummus after lunch thank you good random question how long do you think it's okay to keep the banana skins in the fridge for before or uh, and after cooking and what else could i make with them because i have so many banana skins accumulated for the week you can also make a pulled pork with banana skins. So there is that recipe too. Um, but how long do you think it's okay to keep them before cooking? I don't think very long, um, maybe like three days or something like that. But what you could do, Sarah, is you could actually try freezing them. So I would scrape off all of that, um, you know, the light yellow flesh that's on the inside. I would scrape all of that off and then freeze them like that until you want to cook them. So after you've cooked them, I think that they'll probably last a lot longer. Um, but the one thing that you do have to watch out with banana bacon is that when you store it afterwards, it can go really soggy. And the good thing about it is, is that it's crispy. So there is that to factor in. Uh, Noala said peanut butter is good sub for tahini. Oh, thank you. That's a great suggestion. Really, really good suggestion. Yeah, any of those like nut butters would be a great addition. Um, I think, you know, you still need that like sesame taste because that is a really, really lovely taste. But maybe just a drop of uh, toasted sesame oil would be good. But maybe is it because you're allergic, you know? So if you are, then that wouldn't be 
good for you. Erin said more cumin. Amandine, more garlic. Tanya, thank you for joining us. Uh, George said thank you. Okay, right, now on to our ducker. So ducker is a blend of toasted seeds and nuts and spices. All of the good things in, <laughs> in food in one spice condiment thing that we put onto hummus to make hummus epic. So you can take just like a really bland, boring hummus and you can put ducker on top of it and it will be outstanding. And it looks pretty. So quite often I've said to you guys about how, you know, one of our chef -y techniques is to scatter things on top, little bits that can just make a dish like a lot more interesting. And this will make not only hummus a lot more interesting, but anything, you know, you could put this on so many different, um, so many different recipes. Okay. Uh, Tanya says, hi, hello. Sarah said, thank you. Freezing is a great idea. How long did you frost them before making the bacon? I think you just got to get them out on the side and just let them defrost in the air. Um, but they shouldn't take too long because they're quite thin. Justine says, vegan who doesn't like hummus here, but I will try this one. Okay, why don't you like hummus? So would you be able to tell me why, you, like, maybe there's something about it you don't, maybe it's a hint, tahini you don't like. Okay, so we're heating our pan here because we're going to have to toast quite a few different nut seed spices. So first of all, we've got three tablespoons of hazelnuts and I've done all of this recipe in tablespoons. So you only need one tablespoon for, you know, like to measure it all out. So we've got one tablespoon of hazelnuts in there. We've got one tablespoon of sunflower seeds in here and one tablespoon of walnuts. So you can use almonds. Um, in, instead of the walnuts. Um, you can use, cash I've seen people use cashews as well. I try to use nuts that, uh, that can be grown, that can be produced in the country that I live in, which is the UK. The ones that I've bought aren't necessarily grown and produced in the UK, but what I am hoping is that in the future they will be, and I'll be ahead of the game because the majority of my recipes will be using <laughs> produce from the UK. So that's the plan. That is the plan. Mm. Okay, so we're just going to toast these. We can bring it up a bit because, you know, we can bring the temperature up, the heat of the pan up because I'm right here. I'm not going anywhere. So I know that it's not going to burn. You can do this in the oven as well but of course for these purposes with you guys this isn't going to be so interesting <laughs> if we do it over in the oven because i'd have my back to you and you won't be able to see it as well basically so this is already really really going for it yep and i can hear the the sunflower seeds are already starting to pop so i'm going to bring the temperature back down again because what we don't want to uh, happen is we don't want the next seeds to go in and just instantly they'll just start popping we don't so we do want to control this heat very well but you can see you know this isn't taking very long Whoop. for us to toast in a pan so gosh we're having a messy day messy day Okay, so, so we're going to do this in three batches. So first of all, we've got our hazelnuts, our sunflower seeds and our walnuts. They can just rest in there for a few moments just to cool down whilst we, whilst we toast the next lot of seeds. So now we have two tablespoons of sesame seeds, two tablespoons of coriander seeds, one tablespoon of cumin seeds and half a tablespoon of fennel seeds. So just to say about the fennel seeds, I put a lot of fennel in my ducker because I really, really, really love that aniseedy taste. But it's not everyone's cup of tea. So if it's not yours, then, you know, play around with it. I'm just going to make sure that this is hitting the bottom as much as possible so that we get an even 
and even toast on there. there we, go. we can just put the temperature up slightly. Okay, whilst that is, oh sorry, we've got a couple of questions here. Um, Anne said, did you say one tablespoon of hummus? It says three on the recipe. I, I think I probably accidentally did say that. <laughs> and it is three tablespoons of hazelnuts. Yeah, and I think I also just said hummus instead of hazelnuts. Oh, Anne, it's one of those days. It's one of those days. Okay, so this is starting to pop. I'm just going to pop the, uh, put the temperature down slightly. So yeah, it is three tablespoons of hazelnuts and it is exactly what it says on here. So don't believe anything that comes out of my mouth. Just, just go on this. <laughs> so, but as ever, we will post the recipe later. Okay, so I'm just going to give this a quick blitz. Right, there we go. Now I want this to still have some texture, so I don't want to blend it until it's a powder because I really like having a bit of that nutty texture in my ducker. So I'm gonna bring it round to you guys so that you can see. So you can see there are still bits. It's not a powder at all. I haven't ground it and ground it. Right, there we go. Okay, so we can just pop this back on. And I can already see that our sesame seeds are starting to go golden. But we need it to cook out a bit longer. A bit longer. So the way that you can tell that spice seeds have cooked properly, they've cooked enough, is by the smell, basically. They become quite fragrant. But you want to do it carefully. You want to do it gently because we don't want to burn them. Right, okay, so this we can get out on, we can get into a bowl because I want to grind these separately. So the amount that I'm going to want to grind the nuts is different to the amount of um, time I'm going to grind the seed. So let me just get a bowl for this. Here we go. Okay, and we'll just pop our nuts into here. Go pop that to the side and get these going. So just turn the heat up a little bit. And you do have to mind this, you know, you do have to be here. You can't just nip off and like make a cup of tea or go to the bathroom or whatever. <laughs> you do need to just stay with the seeds and just, you know, check that nothing's burning because you'll think that nothing is happening for ages and then all of a sudden they'll just burn in a flash. Okay. So, um, Erin said, there's my cumin. Yes, there's more cumin in here. And uh, you know, this is one that you can really, really play around with. So Erin, if you love cumin, then put more cumin in it. Um, you know, if there's an ingredient in there that you're not so keen on, then you can take it out completely. With the nuts as well, you know, you can play around with whatever nuts you want to put in there. It's absolutely fine. Um, so it's really, really up to you. Doug said, messy day. One of those, it is. It is, it is. I've got, a, I've got a long day ahead of me as well, so that's going to be an interesting one. Anne said, thank you. Yes, I have days like this frequently. Okay. Can you guys hear that? Can you hear that? Can you hear that popping? So that is the sesame seeds. So sesame seeds will pop. And that is a good indication that this is done. So now we can pop it into our chopper and that is it for toasting so it's just those first two batches that we want to toast the third batch of ingredients the third batch of ingredients we don't have to toast them so we can turn this thing off so that it stops beeping at us which is always a good idea and then we can do our grind on this but we'll just leave it to cool down for maybe a minute or so and we'll grab these last three ingredients here. So I know that this seems like a lot. It does seem like a lot. When I first had a look at um, Ducker recipes years ago now, 
I was really, really overwhelmed. It's a bit like when you first look at a mole recipe and you're like, that, that seems like a lot, a lot of ingredients. And you also think like, oh, it's, it seems like a real fat because there's such a long ingredients list. But with Ducca, you don't necessarily have to include all of these ingredients. You know, you've got the main ones, which are the nuts and, you know, some sort of seeds would be great and things like the coriander seeds, the cumin seeds. But, you know, if you don't have the more unusual ingredients, so say, for example, Nigella, Nigella seeds is, is usually in, in this. But I decided to take it out because quite a few of you might find it difficult to source them. And I don't want you to look at this recipe and go, oh, wow, that seems like really complicated and ingredients I've never heard of and I don't know where to get them from because that's going to be a barrier to you making this. So, you know, you can really pare it back and just have the nuts and the seeds, you know, coriander seeds, cumin seeds, peppercorns, you, know, you can use black peppercorns if that's all you've got, that's absolutely fine, and some paprika and salt, and that would be it. And they're like fairly standard things that we can get most places. Okay, uh, said so Anne said, yes, your clip on, I'll oh, clip on mic, it's really good. You can hear the popping, good, good, good. Oh, thank you, Anne, for telling me that, because I didn't know whether it made much difference, but I'm glad that it did. Um, Noala, sadly, I have to leave this link. Thank you, Chef Dave, you've inspired me. Good, thank you for coming. It was really, really lovely to see you again. Okay, so now I'm going to grind the next, the next batch of seeds. And one of the things that helps me not feel too overwhelmed by this recipe is that I, I, I've divided them into three. So first of all, we've got our nuts and our sunflower seeds, and then we've got the, um, the sesame seeds and the spice seeds that need to be toasted. And then the last lot are these other ingredients that we don't need to toast at all, but they do need to have a bit of a blend. But let's do these seeds first. And you'll see that I'm really moving this around. And the reason why is because it really helps to, um, to make all of these seeds go into the blades more. So it will be ground a lot quicker. Okay, so we'll open this. And, oh, I love that smell. I love that smell. So we just want to grind it until it's flakes. We don't want to grind it until it's powder. And that's one reason why you may not be able to use a spice grinder for this because if your spice grinder only has one setting, which means that it basically makes things into a powder, then, you know, that isn't gonna be suitable for this. So we've got, oh, sorry, I didn't mention what I put in there. So, oh, sorry. One tablespoon of black sesame seeds. That's completely optional. I know that that might be difficult to get hold of. So if you can't get hold of that, don't worry about it. One tablespoon of peppercorns. You can use black, you can use green. I'm using pink because it's what I have. And also I really, really like them. And then half a tablespoon of paprika. So those last few ingredients in our list down here and then we'll just give those a little blast and just to say that if you're going to do this with your blender with your chopper attachment make sure the top is on properly because I know some of these chopper attachments they don't like click in this one clicks in but I've got another one that doesn't click in so it's always a bit worrying you know you have to really keep your hands firmly on it so we're just going to add this and this is like one of the reasons why I want to use pink peppercorns it's because I think you know that with the paprika will just lift the color slightly not make it so brown make it a bit more intense and then we're just going to mix all of that together so this is something that you can keep in your fridge um, because we've got the ground nuts in there it's better to keep it in the fridge and you can scatter this onto onto salad onto any 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 food any food try it on chips i mean <laughs> on any food it would be lovely so we'll just put a couple of spoonfuls of this onto our 
perfect hummus. Actually, I think just one spoonful might be enough because I want to see, I do want to see the hummus. There we go. And then, so you'll see like, you know, that is how much I've made. And you do need to make quite a lot of ducker. You can't make like a tiny amount of it because your blender just won't, won't be able to do that. So you do need to make, <laughs> you do need to make a lot. Um, so I think I've missed a question there. Erin said that she's gonna get one of these hand blenders, good. Uh, Sarah, will this work okay in a food processor too? It does have a chop mode, but I normally use a pestle and mortar. Um, it really depends. There are some food processors where they have really small jugs that you can put onto them. So they might have like three different sizes. So if yours is one like that, then you might be okay with it. So I would give it a go and see how you get on. Um, Marie said that she loves the recipe. Good, good, good. Erin is gonna try some on chips. Let me know how you get on with that. Sarah, how long will it keep both the hummus and the ducker? So. Let me just pop a little bit of extra virgin olive oil on this to finish our recipe. There we go. Um, so the hummus, hummus really should only keep for about four days. And that's because it's got so much protein in it from the chickpeas. Things that are high in protein tend to go off quicker uh, than things that aren't high in protein. So they say that, but I mean, I've been known to eat a pot of hummus you know, like one of the ready-made ones, maybe five or six days afterwards. <laughs> so, but yes, uh, I think maybe about three days would be safe. Uh, with the ducker, the ducker will last a really, really long time. If you're not gonna use it in the next, say, you know, two, three weeks, then freeze it. Yeah, this would be really, really great to freeze um, and then add as a topping or a flavoring for pretty much anything, pretty much anything. I'm gonna stop putting it on my muesli. Um, Lisa said, can you use a pestle and mortar to grind? Yes, you can. If you have a big stone one, of course that would be a lot better because in my like little tiny one, this would take forever. It would really, really take a long time. So let me bring this round so that you guys can get a better, you can see it better. I'll actually bring you to, there we go. So you can see that because I've added these like lovely, pretty little flakes, it's really broken up the hummus, made it a lot prettier, a lot more interesting. The oil that I've added as well, just makes it a bit, a bit more appealing. There we go. Okay, so thank you for joining me today. It was a real pleasure to have your company. You guys are absolute superstars. You're all really, really lovely. Uh, it's been really nice getting to know you all. So uh, Doug said, looks amazing. Love the olive wood, perfect for, the di for this dish. It is, it is, I absolutely love this really pretty bowl. And now he's hungry. Good, that's our intention. <laughs> that is our intention. Um, as I said, it is, International Hummus Day tomorrow, but for us is International Hummus Week, all the week. So tomorrow you will be with Katie. Katie will be teaching you how to make a sweet barbecue hummus, which sounds absolutely divine, absolutely divine. Um, so yes, and then I'm going to make some hummus cookies at some point, not sure which day, but yes, we will do that. We can also make some hummus soup, which is really, really lovely, especially on days where it's not so sunny outside. So we can definitely make that together. Uh, uh, thank you for all the compliments and all the love. Um, and so that bowl is lovely. Is it a coconut shell? No, it's olive wood. It's a piece of olive wood. And I think I actually bought this one from Ocado, actually, yeah. So it's a piece of olive wood, really, really, really beautiful. And you know, if you oil it, the wood comes up beautifully as well. So thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. Do remember to check out the community hub, the group, um, and we will be sharing the recipes on there. We will also be sharing the recipes on our website. So our website is www. 
theveganchefschool.com. So we have been putting all of our recipes onto there, but we're doing them in batches. So, you know, you won't find this recipe on there later on today. It will be, you know, in a few weeks time, but you will be able to find them on our Facebook page and on our Facebook group. So Sarah says she loves chickpea cookies. Good, good, good. Okay, thank you so much, guys. Thank you for joining us. And all of you, please do have an absolutely blooming beautiful lovely day.